Grace and peace to you. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning at Alpharetta Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you are here with us this morning. We especially welcome any visitors who are here with us. We're really glad that you've chosen to be with us today. Would you all take that friendship pad and sign your name and pass it to your neighbor? This is how we know you were here, know your address, so that we can send you information about all the wonderful things happening at the church. I don't know if you've ever made a mistake. We like to make ours very publicly. <laughs> this is Easter week's announcements. Oh well, we all make mistakes. I will share some updated announcements with you. Uh, Family Promise is moving in right now, today. They will be here with us this week. This is the ministry, the nonprofit that serves people who are living without homes, and they live in different churches and synagogues throughout the community. And we are one of the lucky places that gets to welcome these people into our church home. Uh, next Sunday, there is a new member class. If you're a visitor and you're interested in joining us as members, Talk to me today, and I will get you all the information so you can come next Sunday at 9 a.m. Next Sunday, there's also an endowment lunch. You're invited to come have lunch and learn about APC's endowment. That will be in the fellowship hall after this service at noon. Um, VBS is, is on the back of your announcements. It happens this summer. Um, if you have children, you can register them now, and they are looking for volunteers. So if you have time in the summer, we would love for you to come and be part of this really fun, exhausting week. <laughs> and finally, oh, epic worship is also, pay attention to that. That's not, that's next, no, that's the 28th. To, that, that monthly worship service will happen on April the 28th. Finally, the beautiful flowers today are given to the glory of God by Art and Patricia Pashayan in loving memory of Vram and Florence Pashayan and Will and Betty Durham. And now with joy, we turn our hearts and our minds to worship God. Please rise as you're able and join me in the call to worship. I waited patiently for the Lord. God inclined to me and heard my cry. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust. Great is the Lord.
please be seated. At this time of the service, every week, we come and approach God's throne and confess our sins. We confess our sins in front of God and each other because we know that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And we confess because we trust in the promise of salvation. So let us now come to God and confess our sin, our personal sins, our community sins, in front of God and each other. We'll do that first in song, then in silence, then all together in the unison prayer printed in the bulletin. Let us pray together. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to turning away from God in the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. I confess to turning towards the gods that lead me away from you, God of life. I ask with all of these gathered here for God to renew us, Christ to forgive us, the Spirit to enable us to grow in love. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, our Savior, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us pass the peace of Christ one another. Thank you. Peace of Christ be with you. How are you this morning? I am good. You're doing well? I'm doing very well. I am happy and thankful and grateful. Peace be with you. Mary, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Ted, peace be with you. Good morning. How are you? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Anybody want to come? Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, Victor, you're very brave. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 
she brought snacks. You know, in um, the Bible story we're going to read today, Jesus gets a snack too. So it's a good thing to do. I brought this bag to show you in a minute. So do you think what do you think the Bible says anything about what we're supposed to do when somebody new comes to town? Do you remember anything about that? The way the Bible says it is when a stranger is in your land, we say things like somebody new is in our neighborhood, some people showed up. What the Bible says is to welcome these people. Welcome the stranger. I don't know how many times the Bible tells us to welcome the stranger. So, do you know what this is right here? It's one of our nice Alpharetta Prez bags. It's a welcome kit. You see what's in there? Mm. Oh, is this the first thing you saw? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you know what it is. This is toilet paper. <laughs> what else is in there? Pull some things out. Towels, more toilet paper, more toilet paper, <laughs> more toilet paper. What's next? More towels. What's that? Mm -hmm. Toothpaste, soap, shampoo. I would need conditioner as well. <laughs> Toothbrush and some razors. So what do we use all these things for? Do you cook with these things? No. no. Laundry? No. What do you take care of with all of this? Your body. Your body. That's right. Yeah. So we are welcoming people with gifts so they can take care of our bodies because God loves our bodies. They're good. And we get to take care of them. And we get to help other people take care of their bodies. So these kits, do you know how many of these bags I have? Guess. How many? 40. 40, 40 is close. I think I have 65. Plus, I have one of these full of soap and some more shampoo and some more razors. Do you know what I'm going to do with all this today? I'm going to take it to a place called Memorial Drive Ministries. It's kind of southeast of here, closer to Atlanta. And churches from all over are also bringing their bags to be welcome kits for refugees, from people who had to leave their homes because things were so hard they needed to go somewhere else safe. And they came here. And so we're welcoming them. You know what else is really cool? All of these people here brought all of this stuff. And do you know who put it into the bags last Sunday? The youth group put it into the bags. And now I get to do the last leg because I live close to Memorial Drive mm -hmm. Ministries and take all the stuff and drop it off this afternoon. Isn't that awesome? We all had part of this. I saw some pictures of other churches' collections I'm not bragging, but we have more <laughs> than, <laughs> than one or two of the other churches whose pictures I saw of their own bags. So I'm very proud to be part of this. So thanks for helping me celebrate the way we welcome strangers. Let's say a prayer together. God, we thank you for this opportunity to be part of your love and your grace and your care and your welcome. Amen. Thank you for coming up, Victor. Please join me in prayer before we hear the word read and proclaimed. God of grace, with the confidence of the psalmist, let us approach you. Just like you spoke to them, speak to us today. Give us the willingness, the clarity, and determination to hear your word for us this morning 
and to use it in the world that so desperately needs it. In your loving name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture lesson comes from the Old Testament, from the Psalter, and I'll be reading Psalm 4. I will give a disclaimer before I start reading. There is a word that you will read that is very often used in the Psalms, which is the word sila, and this word is unknown to us. Hebrew scholars up till today have no idea what this word means. So if you don't know it, you're not the only one. They think it has to do with music leadership, but then again, that's just a guess. Listen to what the psalmist, with confidence, pleaded to God, saying, Answer me when I call you, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? Silah. But now that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself, the Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Silah. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O God, make me lie down in safety. Holy wisdom, holy word. Streams of love. 
come in. Thank you, Natalie and Sam. Our gospel lesson comes from the book of Luke. Do you remember the story of the two walking on the Emmaus Road? And they meet Jesus there, and he breaks bread and opens their eyes. They went back to where the disciples were. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My daughter is a junior in college. This last week, I got the chance to go see her present the research that she's been doing this year on court watching. If you're not familiar, court watching is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. People go to court and they watch. They're not connected to either side of the people in the trial. They're not connected to the judge or the jury or anybody in the courtroom. They're there to watch the proceedings as citizens, as people who are interested in a fair court system. Occasionally, members of court watching groups will publish articles about what they have seen if there's a particularly discriminatory lawyer or judge. They put these in the newsletter or online, different places. These court watchers go out and tell what they have seen. They bear witness to what they've seen, what they've heard in these legal proceedings. God loves a good witness. One of my favorite parts about the Hebrew scriptures is how the earth, the whole cosmos are on God's side working in a legal capacity. In Micah, God is basically filing a lawsuit against the unfaithful people. God says, rise, plead your case before the mountains. Let the hills Hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord and you enduring foundations of the earth. Way back in Deuteronomy, over and over again, Moses calls on heaven and earth to be witness to his words that he spoke to the Israelites. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life. The earth and the cosmos bear witness in the Bible. They are good witnesses because they're constant. They profess the truth. They're interested because they will bear the consequences of our human transgressions. They make good witnesses, and God loves a good witness. In our gospel story today, the disciples aren't good witnesses 
yet. They're still figuring out what's real here. I thought about them when I listened to a recent episode of This American Life. This is my favorite weekly podcast. Back in the 1980s, it was my favorite weekly radio show, but we've both grown up. Now it's a podcast. This episode was titled, Unprepared for What Has Already Happened. This sounds about right when we think about these disciples in the resurrection story, doesn't it? So the four stories in the podcast are about people waking up to the fact that the world has suddenly changed. One episode was about people who have Klein-Levinson syndrome, which causes episodes of extreme exhaustion so that people sleep for literally weeks or months, only waking up to eat and use the bathroom and then just go right back to sleep for months at a time. They literally wake up to a new reality. One story was about a person who woke up in the midst of the pandemic, not having any idea why everybody was behaving so strangely. Another was about a person who woke up in the aftermath of 9-11, having no idea what had happened. Another one of the stories was about a woman who is a Russian journalist. She wrote about the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and she had to leave Russia, was living in Germany, and she was poisoned. She just kept believing, kept not believing, what was happening to her. She couldn't catch up to the new reality of her life. Like the people in this podcast, the disciples are unprepared for what has already happened. They're trying to catch up to this new reality that does not make sense. They're not good witnesses yet. The scripture says they're still unbelieving and wondering. And Jesus shows up right there among them. They're startled, they're terrified, they're frightened, they had doubts in their hearts. And Jesus, of course, goes straight to the new reality that they cannot grasp, he says, about his physical presence. He says, touch me, see, I have flesh. And bones. And then he wants a snack. And he eats it right there in front of them. This story changes the world. The physicality of the resurrection, with all of its astonishing, miraculous, impossible, powerful, character is a decisive sign of the dawning of God's realm. And the disciples can't catch up to it. I don't blame them. <laughs> That's world changing. The Salt Commentary says that Christmas and Easter resonate together as bookends to proclaim the wonderful good news that creation, you and I, are good. So profoundly good that humanity is the dwelling place of divine presence and power. Were those disciples thinking, ah, oh, yes, the indwelling of the divine presence? I don't think so. Yes, 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 the bookend to the incarnation? Probably not. The scripture says, after Christ showed them his hands and his feet, while in their joy, 
they were disbelieving and still wondering. They're still disbelieving and wondering, but now their new reality has brought them joy. This sentence says it all to me, even though I have had a lifetime of church, being taught about the resurrection, celebrating the resurrection, a family that went to church every Sunday, a list of churches where I can still walk in and feel at home, seminary, chaplaincy, ordination, standing before you as a minister of word and sacrament, I'm still disbelieving and wondering and full of joy because of the risen Christ and what this means for our world. A couple of years ago, I participated in an educational Zoom panel for Weinstein Hospice, where I was on the board at the time. A little ad, Weinstein Hospice is really, really wonderful. I was honored to be on their board. Our topic for this educational Zoom panel was interfaith views on end-of-life care. The panelists were me, a Protestant Presbyterian pastor, a rabbi, and a hospital chaplain who is Muslim. We each took a few minutes to give remarks on the end-of-life care from our faith perspective. I went first. And when I was done, one of the others made a joke. He said, when the priest says, Everyone who wants to go to heaven, raise your hand. Everyone in the room raises their hands. But when the guy with the gun walks into the bar and says, everyone who wants to go to heaven, raise your hand, nobody raises their hand. I smiled. I took the joke made at my expense. And I got it. I had made outrageous Easter claims on that Zoom call. I had said things like, we say that because we believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, we also believe that at the time of our own death, through the mystery of God's love for us, God is not done with us. It's not the end of our story. Even after our own deaths, somehow we continue to live in and with God. And this gives us hope. I said that because of this resurrection story that we tell year after year and Sunday after Sunday, we believe there is not one thing in this world that God cannot redeem. So... I got why a joke was made at my expense. These are outrageous claims. This is a reality that's not easy to catch up to. In our disbelieving, our wondering, our joy, we are witnesses. Here's how. You donated two carloads full of supplies for refugees. People who are arriving here with literally nothing but hope, they will receive a gift from you, a small indication of new life, of grace in their new reality. You are offering care for the physical bodies of these people, bearing witness to being people of hope, because of this resurrected Jesus, bearing witness to the goodness of our humanity. Because God chose to dwell in us, we care for others. Visitors tell me over and over again how warmly they are welcomed here. You are bearing witness to being in a community because of the indwelling of Christ in this community. You are witnesses to these things, Jesus said. Most of the time, it does feel like we are running to catch up with the reality of being Easter people. 
even two millennia later. But we're doing it together. Sunday by Sunday, donation by donation, prayer by prayer, welcome by welcome, story by story, going out and telling what you have seen and what you have heard. We have a painting to show you. Donna's going to click the clicker and show us. This is a painting by Caravaggio of this scripture. You can see they're sitting down having their snack of fish. And Jesus in the middle isn't just talking and eating. He's sending. His hand is saying, we don't stay at the table. Go out. You are witnesses to these things. As many of you know, I did my doctor of research, doctor of ministry research here a couple of years ago. Many of you were my research partners, for which I'm still very grateful. Being a witness means going out and telling your story. What did you see? What did you hear? How has this impacted your life? In order to do that, we have to learn how. And in my research, I discovered that APC is a healthy place to learn how to be a witness. Here's what I learned about you. I'm quoting myself. I learned that APC is doing the work of helping members find their voices, even though they don't talk about it in that way. They're listening to stories and making space for sharing stories. Through their presence and active listening, they are promising each other that they each have an important voice and an important story to tell. They're making space for people who did not believe that they should take up space. They are freeing people from the desperation of believing that their story does not matter. In these ways, they are making claims of liberation that come through speaking one's story aloud in community. Let me put that in a sentence. You are witnesses who support one another in this holy work. In your disbelieving, in your wondering, keep following your joy of being good witnesses because God loves a good witness. Amen. As the Caravaggio painting gets right, God does not bless us and leave us, but sends us and uses us. Will you respond now to the good news and stand and claim your faith? We'll use words off the west coast of Scotland from the Iona community this morning, saying together, with the whole church, we affirm that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ, empowered by the Spirit. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of life, the unfolding purpose of God forever at work in ourselves and the world. Please be seated. It's a celebration in the life of our congregation to point out that at the earlier service this morning, we ordained and installed two new officers, Perry Smyre as deacon and Cynthia Deck as elder. We're grateful for their willingness to serve. And we celebrate their ordination and installation to office. Now I ask you as living sacrifices to make your offering uh, to God for the good work of the gospel. 
And let us give generously and joyfully in response to the blessings we have known and for the furtherance of the work of the church and the world. I'll invite the ushers forward. in the world. Through the giving of the church, may the truth of Scripture come to pass that the one who has too much has nothing left over, and the one who has too little lacks for nothing. Take and use these gifts, our time and talents, the offering of our very lives and hearts for your purposes and for your glory, the sharing of the good news in word and deed. Uh, Bless all who receive and all who give, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated. We will go from this place this afternoon. The confirmation class will meet with Deanna Womack, a 
member of the church who's also a professor of Islamic studies, so I think the conversation will be some interfaith conversation with our confirmation class. That's immediately after worship as they prepare to join the church. And then there are the usual activities in the life of the church, Bible studies and other gatherings for fellowship through the day. Uh, we pray for the effectiveness of all of those small groups. We hold Martha Frucci in our prayers. Her, her brother Dale is in Indiana and is in hospice care, as is a church member Lisa Jacobus. Lisa sings in our women's ensemble, and you may know that Lisa, uh, the women's ensemble went and sang in Lisa's home last week or the week before, and we're grateful. She's grateful for your prayers um, as she uh, is at home. Nell DeVore asks for our prayers. Her mother, Nancy, is in ICU in South Carolina. And Norma Capone's mother is in very poor health, uh, failing health in South Carolina. Norma is visiting there and asks for your prayers. We have some good news. Reverend Audrey Schindler, you may know that name, founding members of this church and early members of this church, one of our founding co-pastors uh, in this congregation, I guess we're not a new church development anymore because Audrey's retiring. So we celebrate with her. I'm sure she'd love to hear from you. Uh, you know, there's a Bible verse that says, we've inherited cisterns we haven't uh, dug. We've inherited vineyards we didn't plant. All of us have inherited the congregation, uh, and with and most exceptions. Uh, we weren't here when it started very few exceptions. So let Audrey know. I'm sure she'd love to hear from you. She's retiring from the, being a pastor at First Presbyterian Church in, uh, in Portland, Oregon. And uh, she retires by the end of next month. I did a quick uh, search. They still have her on the website, so you can find her in the spelling and, and the address. Uh, but congratulations to Audrey. One of our own uh, on staff now, Donna Abu Guzala, who's a member of the church and has been in choir into ministry, has now entered a, a next phase in her preparation for ordained ministry, and she is now officially a candidate. So congratulations to Don. <laughs> what does a candidate mean? It just means in all the hoops and hurdles that she has to jump, she's got one more behind her by the grace of God. Uh, means probably she can be ordained and installed as she completes final requirements for that uh, sometime in the fall or early in next year and where we celebrate with her. We hold in our prayers, our nation, our world. Uh, there are times of certainly of increased hostility, ongoing violence. Uh, we bring all those joys that, and concerns we've shared aloud and those on our own hearts let us bring them to the throne of grace and offer our prayer this morning. Thank you, God of the cross and God of the empty grave. This is a beautiful day. It is, an, it is the Easter season. You are at work refreshing our hope, pouring out blessings upon us. We are privileged to witness to miracles. We enjoy community and friendship. New life is awakening within and all around us. Just as the risen Christ so often offered, may we and our loved ones in this world receive what you seek to give. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Be with us. Be upon and within our world. We thank you for new officers willing to serve in the church. We thank you for every member or friend of the church who adds a voice of praise, gives some time for prayer, makes a donation, volunteers some time, or gives their ability or offers a smile or a handshake for every faith commitment that is given in service that leads to making it a better world, blessing and helping others, Build up our community in love. Build us up to shine and share your light and life with a world in need. This morning we pray for hostilities and fear, lies and injustice, war and suffering and division, hatred. May they be transformed to friendship and faith and harmony, to truth and justice, to peace and wholeness. 
Loving God, you are able. So come near, be present, show yourself to us. Do amazing and mighty things for our world. It is a world in need. Do those things even in our own lives and in our own communities and and with our loved ones. You have blessed and renewed us by your saving grace, and we are your joyful witnesses with everyone we meet and everywhere we go. O God, when we hold a newborn, our hearts leap. When we experience an eclipse, we stand in awe. When we hear the birds singing, when colorful azaleas are blooming, when trees green again, and when impossible shots fall close to the hole, we stand in amazement. We enjoy friendship. We think of all the blessings, all the things we enjoy, all that you provide for us. Such goodness makes us pause, makes us return back to you, the source of our life, the source of our hope, the source of our joy and our blessings. We give you our praise, our gratitude. We must name the miracle of your steadfast love and your comforting presence and your work at, at, and your presence at work in the world. And so now hear us with gratitude and thanksgiving as we remember the prayer Jesus taught and we call upon you in faith saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. You have seen amazing things today. A whole community coming together to offer a vision of hope and grace and care to refugees. You have heard astonishing things today. You were created so good that the divine power dwells in us.
Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Go out and share this witness, knowing that the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen. Amen.